July 19th. On this day we keep the memory of our venerable mother Makrina and her four companions in the ascetic life. The sister of Saint Basil and Saint Gregory of Nyssa, Saint Makrina was the eldest of ten children in this family of saints. At the moment of her birth, in 327, a mysterious personage appeared to her mother three times, telling her to name the child after Saint Thecla, the first woman martyr and a model for all Christian virgins. She, however, kept this name secret, and the child was called after her grandmother, Macrina the Elder, who had been a disciple of St. Gregory the Wonderworker, and had lived in the forest of Pontius at the time of the Great Persecution. Her mother occupied herself with instructing her, not in secular culture and in the frivolous things common to people of their standing, but in all that, in the inspired scriptures, was suited to her age and moral formation, especially the Book of Wisdom and the Proverbs. The Psalms of David accompanied her in all that she did, on getting up in the morning, beginning any work, finishing the work, at the beginning and end of all meals, before going to bed, and on getting up at night to pray. When she was twelve years old, her beauty not being able to be hidden, her father betrothed her to a young man of a good family and reputation who had just completed his studies and who promised to wait until Macrina was of marriageable age. However, he was taken to God before they were married, and this allowed the saint to realize her secret desire to live in virginity in order to seek God. Many suitors presented themselves, but Macrina pre preferred to see herself as a widow without even having enjoyed the joys and the pleasures of conjugal life. Through her hope in the resurrection, she reckoned that her spouse had left on a journey. Setting aside every link with the world, she lived with her mother, putting herself at her mother's service in all the domestic tasks, even those that were reserved for the slaves and also helped her in educating her brothers and sisters. After her father's death in 341, she took on the management of their vast lands in Pontius, Cappadocia and Armenia, and by her example persuaded her mother to turn to the good things that are incorruptible, the contemplation of God and true philosophy. They lived the ascetic life together, giving themselves to the reading of and meditation on the Holy Scriptures, and Macrina was to all of them protectress, teacher, and model of the virtues. Once freed from the education of her children, Amelia shared out her possessions among all of them and turned the family home of Anissa into a monastery. They made their servants companions in ascetical struggle, and Macrina succeeded in persuading Basil, who had returned from Athens after having brilliantly completed his studies, to renounce a promising career as a rhetorician in order to embrace the evangelical life. Beside the women's monastery, which grew with the addition of widows from noble families, a community of men was also formed, directed by Macrina's youngest brother, Peter, the future Bishop of Sevasta. Saint Nocratius had withdrawn to a hermitage, later occupied by Saint Basil, on the other bank of the Iris, and provided for needy old men with the spoils of his hunting. Freed thus from bondage to the needs of the body and preoccupation with this life, Macrina and her companions led in their retreat a life on the borders of human and angelic nature. With them, there was seen neither anger, envy, hatred or arrogance, nor anything like them. All desire for honour or glory was banished. Their pleasure was temperance, their glory to be known to no one, their fortune to possess nothing. They lived from the work of their hands, but remained free from preoccupation, for their true work consisted in meditation on the divine realities, unceasing prayer, and the uninterrupted singing of hymns. One day, a tumour attacked Macrina's breast. Despite her mother's pleading, 
she refused to receive the care of a doctor, judging that to reveal part of her body to a man's eyes would be more unpleasant than the illness. She spent the night in prayer in the church and anointed the wound with mud made with her tears. In the morning, she asked Amelia to make the sign of the cross over her breast, and the tumour disappeared, leaving only a tiny scar. She had achieved such impassibility by her diligence in the things of God that on the death of Nocratius in a hunting accident, she was for her mother and the rest of the family a model of mastery of self and faith in eternal life. In the successive griefs that fell on the community, she showed the same greatness of soul, steadfast as an athlete exposed to blows, both in front of her mother's coffin and when St. Basil, the son of orthodoxy, fell asleep in 379. If she then grieved, it was less at the loss of a brother than to see the church deprived of its teacher and support. During the famine that fell on Cappadocia in 368, Anissa's monastery became indeed a city of charity, a refuge and consolation for all the local people, and by the saints' prayers the grain reserves which were given to all in need were miraculously replenished. Shortly after St. Basil's death, St. Gregory of Nyssa learned that his sister had fallen gravely ill and visited her in the monastery after nine years of absence. He found her lying on a board, attacked by fever, but holding her spirit free in the contemplation of heavenly blessings, so that this refreshed her body as with a dew. When they spoke together of the great Basil, the saint, instead of grieving, used the moment to speak at length on the nature of man, on the meaning of creation, the soul, and the resurrection of the body. On all these subjects her discourse flowed like water from a spring, easily and unimpeded. Until the last moment she did not stop speaking as a philosopher on that which she had made the object of her choice, the love of the invisible spouse whom she was in haste to join, no attachment to this life being able to hold her back. When she felt the end approaching, she stopped speaking to those around her, and her eyes turned to the east. She stretched out her hands to God, and she started praying. With this prayer, the saint traced the sign of the cross on her eyes, her mouth, and her heart. She was silently present at the evening office, and then with a great sigh, her prayer and her life together ended. During her funeral, over which St. Gregory presided and at which a huge crowd was present. St. Macrina's spiritual beauty shone in a striking way on her body, which had been clothed as a bride, accompanied by the singing of hymns as on the feasts of the martyrs. She was buried at Ibora, in the same tomb as her parents, in the church of the forty martyrs. Blessed is our God, always known for the ages and ages. Amen. Glory to you, O God, glory to you. Heavenly King, we comfort the Spirit of Truth, who are everywhere and filling all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life. Come and abide in us and cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O Most Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our transgressions. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Thy cross thou didst follow Christ, and by thy deeds thou didst teach us to overlook the flesh, for it passes away, but to attend to the soul, since it is immortal. Wherefore, O righteous Macrina, thy spirit rejoices with thee. shall open my mouth to chant, and with the Spirit shall I be filled, and word shall I now pour forth unto the Mother and Queen, and I shall be seen in joyous jubilation, acclaiming exultantly all of her wondrous deeds. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. O all-glorious Macrina, importune the Immaculate Bridegroom of the Soul's beauty, for whom thou didst long, whom thou didst love with thy whole heart, to enlighten those who sing thy prayers. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for Since us. Since thou art the abyss of unconceivable goodness, O Christ, thou hast glorified thy spotless bride, who has nailed down with vehement desire for thee, even the blameless and much celebrated Macrina. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O, o laudable Macrina, thou fervently keeps the glory of thy virginity inviolate through asceticism and thy way of life, putting the flesh in subjection to the Spirit. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The day star is a reason in the hearts of them that honor thee with faith as the Mother of God, and the light-bringing day has dawned Christ, who shone from thy womb, O all blameless Bride of God. Neither in wisdom, nor in power, nor yet in riches do we boast, but in thee, O Christ, the hypostatic wisdom of the Father, for none is holy save thee, O thou who lovest mankind. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Adorned with God-given beauty and with grace, and gloriously descended from the stock of martyrs, O August Macrina, thou didst vow with their God-inspired words. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for Obeying us. Obeying the divine law, O Virgin, thou didst abandon the turbulence of life and flood's tumult, devoting yourself with longing to fasting and supplication. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou didst yearn for holiness from thy tender youth, and kept under thy mother's watchful care. Thou wast preserved perfectly uncorrupted and without fault, O Macrina. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We know thee, O all-holy Virgin, to be that virgin earth, which without being sown brought forth for us the sheaf of life, wherewith made steadfast we call thee blessed. Through holiness of life, thou the pure Lamb without spot, was mystically united and wed to the Lord God, for thou hast adorned thyself with the beauty of grace divine. Wherefore thou hast now received the grace to work healings, curing every sickness by the strength of the Spirit, Macrina most venerable. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Unwedded Theotokos, O pure Virgin Mary, thou only strength and shelter, protecting the faithful, 
Deliver from dangerous woes and all grievous adversity. All who place their hope in thee with faith, O blessed maiden, and make haste to save our lowly souls, O Our Lady, by thy divine prayers to God. Seated in his holy glory upon the throne of divinity, Jesus, most divine, has come on a light cloud, and with his incorrupt arm has saved those who cry, Glory to thy power, O Christ. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Since thou art now dead to the world and to the things of the world, thou hast vindicated thy divine longing to live unto God alone, preserving the beauty of thy bridegroom incorrupt and pure, O all venerable Macrina. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. She who rivaled Thecla, the August first martyr, and imitated her divine life of faith, symbolically received her name also by divine inspiration from on high. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou, let's virgin, to be brides, O Macrina, offering them to the virgin word, who shone forth from the Virgin, for thou didst manifestly demonstrate unto them that dispassion is fitting and proper for him who is dispassionate. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Bride of God, divine streams of gifts and fountains of healings and the distribution of divine riches are distributed by the life-originating hand of him that was born of thy womb. O namesake of grace. The ungodly perceive not thy glory, O Christ, but waking at dawn out of the night, we hymn the only begotten one who lovest mankind, thou effulgence of the glory of the Father's divinity. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. O comely virgin, all wise Macrina, thou couldst not endure to have the stately and godlike beauty of thy soul defiled with passions, for thou wast mindful of the unspeakable beauty of thy holy bridegroom. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Made rich with Christ as a strong and secure and unbreakable consolation, thou didst mortify the much troubled tumult of the passions, rising early in the night to glorify the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou kept thy mind steadfast in Christ, for thou wast cast upon him from the womb, O unblameable Macrina, and struggling in asceticism from thy youth, thou didst dedicate unto him both thy body and thy soul. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Mother of God, thou givest birth to Christ, the creator of all who formed us anew when we had willingly slidden into corruption and exalted us unto ineffable glory. I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of praise, O Lord. Thus Christ, the church, unto thee, for by the blood that flowed from thy side because of thy compassion, she has been cleansed of demons' gore. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. The longing for Christ had manifestly flourished in thy mind, particularly planted there every form of virtue and divine teachings of piety. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Singing God's praise with unceasing supplications, thou drewest to thyself his steadfast protection, O Virgin, and it received the grace of divinely inspired virginity. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Christ crowned thee with the crown of grace, is a pure virgin, and the leader of a choir of virgins, and he brought thee to dwell in the heavenly bright chambers, O godly-minded Macrina. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. What was formerly separated is now come together into one, for thou in ineffably gives birth to God the Word, truly incarnate into natures united one to another, O all blameless Lady. Thou didst love the good God with all thy heart, O venerable Macrina, and taking his precious cross upon thy shoulder, Thou didst zealously follow after him, wherefore thou hast found forgiveness of offenses. O all 
him, Lord God of our fathers, who did save the children of Abraham in the fire, slaying the Chaldeans whom justice rightly overtook. Blessed art thou, O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Yearning for Christ alone and wounded with the most perfect love, thou didst openly cry out, After thee do I run, O supremely praised Lord, the God of our fathers, blessed are thou. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for Thrusting us. Thrusting away the sorely troublesome movements of the passions, thou didst put on a radiant robe of this passion, crying out, O supremely praised Lord, the God of our fathers, blessed are thou. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When thou had cast down the haughtiness of the malicious author of evil, which was lifted up like a wild beast, O admirable Macrina, thou didst receive the prize of victory while chanting, O God of our fathers, blessed are thou. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. With Amen. thy motherly boldness, O all pure virgin, break the cords of the failings of them that piously and faithfully sing unto thine offspring. O supremely praised Lord, the God of our fathers, blessed art thou. Three guiltless youths cast in the furnace were saved by the offspring which the Theotokos bear. Then in figure and in type, now in very truth indeed, and he has gathered all the world which cries out in chant. He works of his who sing the Lord's praises, and exalt him greatly for ages and all ages. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Eminent in thy sacred ways and thy purified life for all fame, Macrina, thou was seen to be an inviolate offering, a hidden beauty, a godlike ornament, crying out, Praise you, the Lord, and supremely exalt him unto the ages. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Clothed with the mortification of passions, thou hast passed over to divine immortality, having excellently taught through thy life of philosophy that the soul is immortal and self-determining, as thou didst cry, Praise you, the Lord, and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. Be blessed, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Shining in mind and countenance with the splendor of the thrice radiant profusion of light, thou hast slept a blessed sleep, O all blameless Macrina, beholding with gladness him whom thou didst long for, and crying out, Praise you, the Lord, and supremely exalt him unto all the ages. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. We Amen. praise thee, the all-holy ark, which being overshadowed by the divine spirit, gave birth to the eternal word who was before the ages, he who became man for his untold compassion's sake, and we supremely exalt thee, O Mother of God, unto all the ages. He, by the disease of disobedience, brought in the curse. But thou, O virgin Theotokos, hast put forth blessing for the world through the offspring of thy childbearing. Wherefore we all magnify thee. O Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for us. Thou didst imitate the truly rich mercy of God, filling all afflicted with poverty. O all fame, Macrina, hence the merciful one has glorified thee, who didst show thyself to be merciful. Holy Mother Macrina, pray to God for Thou us. standst clothed with light in the presence of God, O all glorious Macrina, for thou became the light adorned in way of life and speech and with all manner of distinct and making illustrious the glory of thy race by thy spiritual ascents to the highest thing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou hast made thy dwelling in the brightest of bright chambers and in heavenly quarters, O Macrina, as thou abides there with the high priests that were thy brethren. Beseech the Lord with boldness, O Holy Virgin, that all who praise thee may be saved. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Comelier in beauty and illustrious above all is the fruit of thy womb, O Virgin Theotokos, for thou gavest birth unto God incarnate, made manifest that he might save man. Wherefore we all magnify thee. In thee the image was preserved with exactness, O Mother. 
O taking up thy cross, thou didst follow Christ, and by thy deeds thou didst teach us to overlook the flesh, for it passes away, but to attend to the soul, since it is immortal. Wherefore, O righteous Macrina, thy spirit rejoices with the angels. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, he who without corruption gave his birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ, God, our oh, hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, in the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy life-giving cross and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, at the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Sisoes the Great, Brandon the Navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, protectors of our monastery and our community. At the prayers of our righteous mother Macrina, sister of St. Basil the Great, with the prayers of St. Emilia, Emily, mother of St. Macrina, with the prayers of our righteous father Dias, the wonder worker, who was from Antioch in Syria and reposed in Byzantium. With the prayers of our Holy Father Seraphim, the wonder worker of Sarov, the recovery of whose holy relics we celebrate this day. With the prayers of the holy four fellow ascetics who repose in peace. With the prayers of our Father among the saints Theodore, who struggled in asceticism at the Saint Sava Monastery and afterward became the Archbishop of Edessa. With the prayers of our righteous father Abba Diocles, with the prayers of our father, St. Gregory, the Bishop of Panedus, the new confessor for the holy icon's sake. With the prayers of the holy virgin martyrs, Justa and Rufina of Seville. With the prayers of the holy virgin martyr, Aurea, who was beheaded in Cordova by the Moors in the year 856. With the prayers of the blessed Romanus, Prince of Riazan. With the prayers of our righteous father, Paisius of the Kiev Caves with the prayers of St. Stephen, Prince of Serbia, and of his mother, St. Melitza, and those with them whose memory we keep this day. At the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us. For he is good, and he loves mankind. Amen. And the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.